Well, for the first time in history, a U.S. government whistleblower has testified before Congress that the United States government has in its possessions extraterrestrial beings, yes, non-human pilots, the bodies recovered from crashed UFOs. And while you watch this testimony that I'm about to show you, remember that it is a federal crime to lie under oath before Congress. It's very important for you to remember that and the very thing that could put Dr. Fauci behind bars for the rest of his life. Watch. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Who in the government either, what agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting? And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super. Thank you. And I yield back. My next guest is probably not surprised by any of this. His name is Dr. Stephen Greer. He leads the Disclosure Project, and he's authored multiple books on the subject. So he's known about this for decades. This might not come as new news to him. Dr. Greer, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. So when you were watching this, this testimony, as we all were very closely, did you hear anything to your astute ears that surprised you, that stood out to you, something you'd not heard before, uh, stood out to you perhaps as new information? No, none of it was new. Of course, as most of you know, uh, I've been involved with this for over 30 years. And in fact, in the case of Mr. Grush, I had uh, met him uh, about uh, March of 19, uh, 2022 and had been providing him information as well as folks he works with um, uh, associated with the Senate Intelligence Committee and their investigators. And so um, I, I knew what he knew and the whistleblowers that he has um, because um, a lot of information that my group has, we've transferred over to these investigators. For example, we have over 700 primary whistleblowers. Uh, now, remember, Mr. Grush is a secondary, meaning he didn't actually handle the craft or the bodies. He spoke to people who had. So we have about uh, 700 folks like that. And we've been bringing them to D.C. through the SCIF for Arrow and the Pentagon. I think that what, what surprised me a little bit uh, that was unfortunate is the conflation or the lack of distinction between the man-made UAPs, which is actually the dominant phenomenon. Right. Uh, although that's the, not the, We should be clear, the reverse engineered craft that the United States black ops, off the books projects, have been reverse engineering these craft for decades. That's the predominant things that people are now seeing in the sky, but based on these alien craft originally. Correct, and there are actual extraterrestrial vehicles, ETVs as they're called, uh, but I think that because of that lack of distinction, uh, uh, Amanda, I've met quite a bit with, uh, uh, Congressman Burchett, you know, asked about uh, extraterrestrials harming or killing people. Those events that have been reported to Mr. Grush and others were actually done by human operations that are rogue and very criminal. So I think one of the complexities here that needs to get parsed out in future hearings that we're you know, very much aware of, uh, and, and even briefings that happen in the SCIF, uh, is, is a distinction between what humans are doing and what is, let's call it, uh, innate extraterrestrial activities. Now, I think the complexity of that is a barrier to its understanding. In other words, in 1991, I had a pretty senior intelligence official who was involved with this subject come to me. He says, if you tell the public the truth about this, the truth is less believable than the fiction we've been selling. So remember that in 1953, 
we have a document from the director of the CIA talking about the quote, psychological warfare value of the UFO subject. There's a 1985 CIA document describing the psychological warfare value of their operations in Brazil and Argentina that have been in, uh, abducting and torturing civilians made to look like an alien event. So when uh, someone who's new to the subject, uh, like Mr. Grush, who's quite young, and, and some of these congressmen who are just learning about it, they don't have the information yet, which is what we're trying to get to them, that you have to entertain two totally separate events going on, but they're copycat. So since, you know, if you look at the reverse engineered human craft, we call them ARVs or uh, alien reproduction vehicles or ATs, just advanced technology craft, those simulate uh, an ET craft pretty closely to look at it up close, but in terms of their maneuverability, how they come and go. And we've also created what's called stagecraft to cause abductions of people. Now, why would that happen? Because they eventually want to sort of have a global militaristic totalitarian grip on, on the whole public about there being some alien invasion. It's like a bad Hollywood movie. But that's been the long-term defense plan uh, since the 1950s, about 70 years on now, uh, regarding the UFO issue. That's been why they've taken so much time curating and developing false flag operations such as abductions and mutilations and events like that, and, and even the murdering of innocent civilians in developing countries in Africa and South America. So that issue is, is the real crux of the problem. And I will tell your listeners, the biggest part of the secrecy is what I just said. And the next biggest is the fact we figured out how these things go. So we have a new film out, The Lost Century and How to Retrieve It, that unpacks 100 years of very exotic technologies that have been sequestered and kept secret because if they were released, there would be no need for oil, gas, coal, nuclear power, et cetera. Um, and so the, the interests that are maneuvering and, and manipulating this situation are extraordinarily powerful, have more assets and money than the entire U.S. government. I'll say that on the record and is an existential threat. But luckily, it, the, it, the Senate is about a year and a half ahead of the House. And there are people we're working with there who fully understand this crisis. There are special projects going on at the Pentagon that I can't say more about that we're involved with who also understand this and are uh, making plans to correct the problem, and meaning that these illegal and rogue operations are going to have to be stood down. Uh, one thing I want to ask your, your viewers, if you are in these operations currently, I know you don't know this unless you're a very senior uh, you know, on the management level corporate or government, uh, if a legitimate U.S. government entity, an FBI operation comes to your facility, you are to put your weapons down and you are not to resist. Now, the reason I'm saying this, and I know it's ominous, is that these projects cannot be allowed to go on indefinitely. Uh, the gaslighting, the dissembling, this could go on for another 50 years. So uh, I know for a fact that there have conclusions have been reached in some very high places that these operations are rogue, are illegal, and are a threat to world security and national security. But if you take, for example, I'm, I've gotten to know quite well uh, Area 51 guy who was there for several years in his mid to late 20s and was read into projects there dealing with extraterrestrial and human operations and also at Wright-Patterson and Eglin Air Force Base. And, uh, you know, he had no idea that at the upper reaches of management of those operations, that those were not being, uh, you know, supervised legally by the Congress or the, or the president. Now, I found that out when I briefed the president's CI director in 1993. So I've had that baked into my cake for a long time. But most of these people, let's call them the very highly classified personnel, whistleblowers that are firsthand witnesses. And they're not like Grush, who found out from firsthand, but the direct witnesses like the Disclosure Project has. They have no idea 
that they're in an illegal project, but they need to get this message very quickly because they cannot, uh, I understand that it's the chain of command and they're following orders, but at this point, read between the lines. The majority leader of the Senate is, is taking action to get to the bottom of this because he's not been read in. The oversight committees, the Senate Intelligence Committee, the Armed Services Committee, senior people in the Pentagon that I briefed in the past, and for heaven's sake, it's a sitting CIA director that I briefed. You can't have a project going forward that's acquiring extraterrestrial vehicles, reverse engineering them, developing advanced technologies that fly like a UAP, and do this all without oversight legally. If you do it that way, it is a rogue and unconstitutional project. So to all of you working in those areas, please be prepared to cooperate with the rule of law and the constitution, number one. Number two, if you are a whistleblower or witness to these operations currently or in the past, please contact us at our website, which you can put up for folks. Yeah, we'll have it linked in the description so people can come forward. Overall, when you saw members of Congress, though, asking some fairly nuanced questions, I, I couldn't believe, I couldn't actually believe here we were in 2023 with members of Congress asking, asking questions about interdimensional beings in front mm -hmm. of Congress. I mean, mm -hmm. that just that's one thing that stands out to me. And, and oh, David Grush mm -hmm. kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, there was other more nuanced questions about the types of vehicles and propulsion propulsion mechanisms. It wasn't sort of the, the laughing stock that we've seen in past hearings. They actually seem like really interested in getting to the bottom of this. I, just on the yes. interdimensionality question. What do you know about the interdimensionality piece that David Grush was asked about, or these beings traveling interdimensionally? What, in your experience, can you speak to? Well, th this first of all, let me state that a number of the questions that were being asked were ones that I had been requested to write for some of the members. It, they so seem just... pretty sophisticated, I will admit. Yeah. I mean, when, you're, when they're reading them and off I'm of not, those and cards. <laughs> and I'm not going to say which ones, but right. we've been providing on background this sort of information, and I specifically... Uh, yesterday had a call with one of the members and, and, and helped them develop those specific questions. But to answer your question about interdimensionality, uh, let me let me use this analogy. Uh, if you are going to go from one star system to another, you cannot go even at the speed of light in a straight line. OK, it would take too long. It's like if you're from, you know, a, a star system that's 50,000 light years away, which is just in our own galaxy, it would take 50,000 years at the speed of light. Moreover, if you know Einstein's formulas, if you are just accelerating up to the speed of light, when you hit the speed of light, you take on infinite mass. So it's not possible. So the only way to go from point A to B in, in, in the cosmos is it's like a piece of paper that you fold space time. Now, when you fold space time, you're actually traversing other dimensions. It gets complicated and you are actually the whole, all the physics that we deal with in the 3D universe are not operative in the other dimensional aspects of the cosmos. And so it's a bit of a misnomer to say, these beings and craft are interdimensional, but not extraterrestrial. A priori, if you're extraterrestrial and you're going from one star system to another, you have to be interdimensional. Okay, is this clear? I mean, I know it right, sounds a little right. confusing, but but it's like it's like saying, well, is an orange orange or is it round or is right. it a fruit? Well, it's right. the orange, only round way fruit. the only it's way you could the, above. the only way you could travel like this is interdimensionally is the answer, Correct. right? Yes. And, so and I use the term transdimensional because you're tra transiting through dimensions. Now, to make this a little more confused, there are beings that are not extraterrestrial that are from other dimensions, but not extraterrestrial from another physical planet. So this gets into a whole understanding of a cosmology, let's say, that needs to be greatly updated from the good old days of Carl Sagan and your Harvard astrophysicists. Right. But, uh, but at any rate, it is correct to say that these are extraterrestrial and transdimensional or interdimensional because there is no way to go from point A to B without going trans transiting through other dimensions. Because uh, once you go beyond the speed of light, 
and you're dropping out of linear space time to appear at one point to another for the time that you are well time is not a correct term for for the episode let's call it of going from point a to b you are interdimensional you're transcending transitioning through dimensions so uh, that's why i think again there needs to be a little more background briefing for the congressman i know they're very busy with other things and some of this gets to be a bit obtuse or abstract or what have you but uh, the public needs to understand this because these terms get thrown around without proper definition or, in my opinion, scientific reference. Do you think that now Congress has been given the green light? It seemed like this bipartisan back and forth, it was sort of a green light yesterday to say, you now have the wherewithal to go <laughs> forward, find out where these craft are being stored where they're being studied, where they're being reverse engineered. Over and over and over again, we heard from members of Congress today asking that question of Grush, and he said, I will give you specific names, locations, et cetera, behind closed doors in a skiff, right, which is a secure, a secure whatever conference room that's protected from whatever, right? Um, right. He'll give you those names, those locations, and I'm sure you've, you've already provided a lot of that information to them already anyway. So now we is have. this a green light for them to go and look and ask? I know Tim Burchett, I think he went to Florida on one particular location where they, he got there and they yeah, moved one, stuff, right? He went there and they well, took everything away or what happened there? Yeah, so this this is the problem. Um, I know the senior investigator for uh, Senate uh, Intelligence and Armed Services, back when he first contacted me, had gone out to the Lockheed Skunk Works. And he basically was showing a bunch of old jet engines and, and aircraft and he knew he was being gaslit and, and deceived so that's when they reached out to me in in, in the january of 2022 a year and a half ago so the problem is you're not going to knock on the front door and say pretty please let us see this and this has happened to presidents senior ranking members of congress and frankly, to the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, CIA, and the head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff that I personally briefed, all of them ran into this. So this is where my earlier caveat, people working in those facilities cannot any longer cooperate with those, uh, let's call them OPSECs, operational security protocols, because those programs are being run criminally and illegally and unconstitutionally. So that's why I'm trying to get that met. The re that is the reason I'm on your show today, because there is a clock on this now. And this sort of do -si do game that's been played for uh, 75 years with this is going to have to uh, end fairly quickly. And it needs to end smoothly uh, without uh, anything that could be uh, kinetic or, da or dangerous. Well, we've had a lot of people come forward after the last time that you were on the show, and I encourage our viewers to watch. We've You and I sat down for about an hour and a half and did a really a deep dive right. on this subject. We'll have it linked up in the description here. People can watch that that deeper. Um, I wanted to get your assessment of this hearing specifically and what, what this now portends for us in the future. Can you bottom line it in 30 seconds for us, Doctor? Do you think it was a good day, it was an important day, and this is going to open additional doors? Oh, yeah, it was definitely a good step forward. Um, I think they need to go much deeper in the next step into getting firsthand people in there uh, that we have in the Disclosure Project who have worked in these commands, some of them for 10 years or longer. Uh, I may have mentioned we have this, the chairman of a major defense contractor corporation that's retired that wants to come forward. Uh, we have a number of people that would, which is be the case would be closed, but they need federal witness protection and they need uh, amnesty from prosecution or seizure of their pensions or seizure of their personal assets. So we're trying to get, I'm advising the people in the, in the House and the Senate to fast track those provisions. We did get out of committee uh, three days after the uh, National Press Club event we did on June 12th. Uh, from the Senate Intelligence Committee, a provision that gives safe harbor or amnesty to people who come forward or corporations who come forward uh, within a six month period from its passage is still grinding through the House and reconciliation process. So, I mean, there is very good positive momentum. My big caveat and concern 
is what I opened with, and that's the conflation of staged false flag operations by this, frankly, illegal and criminal operation passed off as alien that then steers us towards a uh, war footing. I mean, this would be the worst World War III scenario ever uh, to pivot uh, Earth against other planetary systems. So uh, there's no reason for that. There's no evidence that any of these civilizations are overtly hostile at all. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of people who would gain a lot of power and money by can brainwashing the government and the people that that's the case. So I think we have to be very skeptical and careful as this goes forward. Yeah, very, very well put. It's nuanced. And to say that these these actions, these horrific crimes that David Grush spoke about were coming from aliens and not a, instead actually humans who were carrying it out, pretending to do it in order to drum up additional money and support. Uh, Dr. Grill, great to see you. Thanks, as Great always, you. for your insight. And uh, we'll have all of what we talked about here linked up in the show. Anyone who wants to reach out to the Disclosure Project and come forward, um, whether as a whistleblower or, you know, high level, it doesn't really matter. Uh, reach out to uh, Dr. Greer's team um, and they will, sure. they will take great care of you. Dr. Greer, great we to will. see you. Thank you. Good seeing you again. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.